The Extra Point. Sponsored by Unwind. We are here <laughs> we, by the skin of our teeth, folks. All right, welcome to week four of the Extra Point. With us in prep, pigskin, futaji, Uncle Benjamin Stanfield and Ben. Second straight week, we had region play taking place all across the Wiregrass. In fact, a lot of postseason possibilities probably were decided tonight. We don't know quite yet, of course. Certainly were, Mike. Uh, Regions week is like the playoffs. Teams mm -hmm. need to win if they want to have any hopes of postseason come November. And speaking of tonight's matchups, let's head over to Sarah Drake for what's on tap on gridirons across the wiregrass. Sarah, good evening. Draco. Good evening, guys. A lot of big games. We had a lot of close scores. A lot of blowouts also. I'm going to have some of those scores here on the big board in a little bit. But for now, if you do have scores, give us a call here, 334-793-1818. We still do need some of your scores, so give us a call. But for now, let's send it back to Mike and Ben. All right, there's the big board. Mm -hmm. Things are going swell there. Let's get some papers organized in a battle of the undefeated. Uh, tonight, I Mike. know. This is a little surprising. As we start things off, we go to Warhawk Stadium. 3-0 Daleville taking on 2-0 GW Long. Are the Rebels back? They already tied with as many wins as they had in 2018. <laughs> yeah, at least. And they are definitely taking it on right now. It's an important Class 2A Region 2 clash. Oh, the Fataji Garvin. Trevor Morris for the GW Long Rebels is going to take the ball here. And he's going to snag a first down in the road white uniforms with the black numerals, as Eli Gold would say. <laughs> GW Long looking for some points. Throws it almost oh, intercepted no. by Jalen White. Out of bounds. He's good, but he's out of yeah. bounds. Rebels special team coming out, and look at that kick and field goals and skip. It looked like Mike. He, he looked like a he was not a sidewinder, an American yeah. kicker. Daleville throwing it deep there, almost picked off by Braxton Whitehead. Three seconds to wow. go before halftime. Daleville going to throw a screen here to Jalen White. Not a lot of yards on that play. Final score mm -hmm. tonight. Uh oh, <laughs> we're going to call this one an upset, friends. Yep. GW Long on the road takes undefeated. Down. Undefeated Daleville <laughs> and uh, undefeated no more. I'll tell you, GW Long is so far the surprise team in the uh, in the viewing area. Right Certainly now. are eclipsing last year's mm -hmm. win total in September. Yeah, yeah, uh, not bad at all. Special, trying to be the team of the week. I feel you guys. <laughs> all right, let's stay with 2A Region Two tonight and head to Memorial Stadium in Abbeville, Mike. Yeah, and folks, the 2-0 and Yellow Jackets hosting the 1-2 and Geneva County Bulldogs. Galvanator rule that unwad pigskin footage indeed, Abby Bills. This is Nathan Hall, and you'll see here, scoops up the ball. It's a bad snap. He runs it in for the touchdown. Nice hand and eye coordination. He played Xbox release. growing up, Mike. Yeah, I know, he <laughs> has it down, in fact, folks. Abbeville fails to get the two-point conversion, score 22-6. Geneva County's, uh, well, he, that's Kahari McReynolds, and he catches a short pass, turns it, and takes it for extra yardage to pick up the first down. But the drive would die. And let's go to the final there. Geneva County losing to the Abbeville Yellow Jackets 50 to 20. Abbeville looks once again like they are just a dynamo like They're they were last year. They're pretty good at uh, making uh, Futaji <laughs> up there <laughs> yeah, so in, uh, in Henry County. All right, 18 Action Sports Cam traveling to rural northeastern <laughs> Dale County tonight. The Ariton Purple Cats hosting winless Houston County. The Lions have yet to roar this year. Another Class 2A Region 2 game. They were rocking, rocking at, at the, the Zoomstein. Zoomstein. Huge crowd on <laughs> hand tonight. Robert F. Zoomstein Stadium. We showed you the crowd because that's all we got in this game. <laughs> all right. So quarterback Ian Sand, he's an eighth grader. He started tonight. He had a big night. When we got there, Ayrton was up 42 to nothing. Rolling clock already in effect just before the half. There were a lot of highlights here. Mm -hmm. Logistically, they happened before we got there. Though. Yeah, well, that happens. You know, we, we can't always be there, unfortunately. So, Ayrton, we're real proud of you. We're coming back. All right, we're going to invest a lot of time in Ayrton in our, in our mm -hmm. next broadcast. 
48 to 12. The final uh, yeah, and they had the player of the week, so we'll notice yeah. that a little bit well, later. And, in the hey, hey, the rookie coming in behind him, Ian, <laughs> eighth grade, trying to be the player of the week years as well. Yeah, a, a thirteen so year old. We're calling him Bo Nix of the Wiregrass, <laughs> yeah. by the way. So, all right, well, folks, let's head to Hicks Stadium in Cottonwood, Alabama. The 0 and 2 Bears the hosting Bears. the winless <laughs> Barber County Jags. Of course, Barber County hasn't won a football game since 2013. I think that was the Obama. Obama was the president. Yeah. This was a night the Jags. Would they break that streak? Well, in the first half, if it tells you anything, answered no. Bears up 37 to 0 with around 11 minutes to go. And right there, as the action, 18 cameras arrived. The Bears were attempting field goal, and it was missed, of course. All right, a miscommunication on leads to a botched handoff. And Zacharias Johnson heaves it up in the air, and Rafael Williams comes down. Nice play there for a big game. However, Cottonwood goes into halftime 44 to zip. Barber County's consecutive losing streak does continue, and that's not a, a typo or anything. Yeah. Cottonwood Bears, and they're not having the best year, but man, they it's look like night, they look like the Chicago that's Bears. That's the kind of night that takes you <laughs> up, friends, to the next level. Is, is Mike Dicta there? I don't know. And Cottonwood tonight, <laughs> just south of the Dollar General, they're doing this right now. Right on the yeah, right on the state line there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get up to speed on the WDHN Big Board with Sarah Draco. Drake, give First us what fan. you got. Well, a blowout there in Cotwood, but not for Enterprise. They take this one 27-24 over the Smith Station Panthers. Dothan and Park Crossing. I was at this game yesterday with Robert. Dothan just couldn't find their footing. Park Crossing wins this one 42 to 27. And in this one, Ufala takes it over Sydney Lanier 27-13. And for Tallahassee, they beat Carroll Eagles 10 to 6. I will have more scores in a few minutes. But for now, Mike Ben. How about Enterprise? Yeah. You know, of course, they were uh, leading by a large margin, so apparently uh, uh, Smith Station did come back there in the in the second half, but still Enterprise won it. Certainly did. Big win tonight mm -hmm. in region play uh, for well, Enterprise. Coming up, we take you to the Eagles Nest. Highlights from our game of the week with the Providence Eagles hosting the Wicksburg Panthers, Class 3A Region 2. Player of the Week, sponsored by Hyundai of Dothan. Hey folks, Felix Hernandez here representing Hyundai Dothan. This week we're at Ayrton High School. Re we're recognizing and we're congratulating Maddox Herring as Player of the Week. Now he is out, but we've got the uh, senior class is going to accept the trophy on his behalf. So here you go, guys. Yeah. 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 Game of the Week, sponsored by ENT Care. 
Well, welcome back, folks. Our Extra Point Board of Directors. You know, we all met behind yeah, closed doors a little bit earlier. We did, yes. And we have a true barn burner for the folks, Ben. Yes, we do, Mike. <laughs> In that illustrious boardroom, we talked about a Class 3A Region 2 matchup at Eagle Stadium on the campus of Providence <laughs> Christian, the undefeated Eagles. Hosting the one-on-one -on -one Wicksburg Panthers. Yeah. And Governator, get that footage on. Come on. Futaji stands for footage, by the way. Let's break it down for you. Everyone's pumped for the big game tonight, including quarterback Collins McClintock. Ooh, tough start, though. Intercepted by LePatrick Murray of Wicksburg. Jackson Glover for Wicksburg finds his man, Clayton Morrison, 25 yards. Nice arm talent, mm -hmm. young fellow. Providence star running back Wise Gordon, though, says not so fast. Bursts up the middle for a big game. And he's going to punch it in for a touchdown. Every week, this kid is just phenomenal. He is phenomenal. And that's the first touchdown of the game there tonight for Providence. And it was a shutout. Providence takes down Wicksburg 21 to nothing. Our man Shane Sellers works on the set, mm -hmm. sales staff here. His son, Bo, plays for Wicksburg. He's one of the big guys. Right, right. And got a little injured tonight. So, Bo, we're thinking about you, brother. And we love you and uh, hope everything is uh, well. Big win tonight for Providence. And Providence Christian looks invincible. I mean, they're not just winning. They're winning by large yeah, margins they're, each they're, week. They're definitely the kings mm -hmm. of the region right now. Mm -hmm. And folks, with us is our Extra Point sideline reporter, Robert Roberto Smith, with the winning coach. Uncle Roberto, as always, keeping it real with the coach. Yeah, that's right, guys. I'm here at the game of the week, and I have Coach Kenny Keith here with me. Coach Kenny Keith, it was a dog fight in that first half, but you guys came back, or you guys put up three additional touchdowns. So let's talk about what was what was that like to get you know to get the ball rolling to, to get, you know score those touchdowns. Well, well, first of all, Wicksburg, give them credit. They they got a good football team. Uh, they hit, they hit us in the mouth there and, and on defense and stuffed us. Uh, my defense, our defense played great. Uh, we got it rolling a little bit in the second half on offense. Made some, our, our offense, uh, offensive coaches made some good play calls. And, uh, you know, we was able to get the win. Anytime you get a win, it's, it's always good. I heard that was your 50th win here. How about that? I, I didn't even know that. They told me that. I didn't even know that. <laughs> you heard it here first here at the game of the week. I got Coach Kenny Keith here. Back to you guys. All right, win number 50. That's impressive. And he's pretty yeah. modest about it. Yeah. You know, like, hey, I didn't even know I had 50 wins. Kenny Keith slowly becoming the Steve Spurrier of local <laughs> high school football. And, you know, he's so. been with the program <laughs> since they first started football at Providence yeah, Christian like 15 there, years ago. Been there a long time. Mm -hmm. Draco, what you got for us on the big board? Well, right here, as you can see, Oxford taking down Charles Henderson 49-14. And then Andalusia taking down Monroe County 49-6. And last for this time, Trinity taking down Headland 44-14. Mm. So maybe Headland can get it rolling next week. Back to you guys. That's Headland's worst loss in quite a while. Yeah, and that's their first loss of the season too. So, so uh, uh, but so I, I think they'll bounce back. You know, under their coach Danny Range, great guy by the way. They got things going on in Headland. Mm -hmm. Don't fear, friends. <laughs> All right, coming up, we're going to talk about the Geneva Panthers on the prowl. Look at that sunset. Beautiful. In beautiful, beautiful Brundage. Another 3A top 10 squad. The Pike County Bulldog. Don't turn the dial. Team of the week, sponsored by Good Morning Mattress Center. We're here on behalf of Good Morning Mattress Center and WDHN's The Extra Point Show and our Team of the Week, Pike County High Bulldogs. Good yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Anna. Anna? Yeah. Whoa! Yeah! We're flexing, baby!
The Extra Point, sponsored by Unwad, preparing athletes for more than sports. Unwad, movement is life. Master it. Yeah, I know. You got a kink in your neck after the big game? I, I, I'll tell you, I got a kink. Those guys will help you fix it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. You know, in fact. All right. Well, last week, Pike County at Bulldog Stadium shut out Houston Academy. Can you believe it? 50 to nothing. Yeah. Well, the undefeated dogs took it to home, well, to the field once again. Yeah, hosting Geneva, an important Class 3A Region 2 clash in Brundage. It's probably our toughest region here. Look at that sunset on the freshly cut yeah. grass in Brundage. Coach Les Sanders, check him out. Mm -hmm. He's fired up and he's coaching him up too. Young man, <laughs> what did you do? You better go to class mm -hmm. on Monday. Panthers held scoreless in the first half. They had big runs. Oh, check this one out. Mm -hmm. All right, watch my man here. He gets up, spreads the gloves mm -hmm. apart. Show me what you're working with. All right, Kahari McReynolds now, Mr. Everything for Geneva. He's camping out in the end zone. That's an interception, Prince. Yeah. So not six for Pike County. Instead, we're going the other way. But Geneva couldn't get on the board in the first half. This is DeQuavius Coleman, though. Quarterback deep to the end zone. There it goes. And he's got Kahiris Pennington for the first score of the game there. And he's excited yeah. about it. He knew he was going to be on the extra point, and he was jumping and up and down, Mike. And that made the difference, too. Six to nothing in that score. And, and that's 14-7. Uh, Pike final. County yeah. spelled wrong, but it's, you know, that, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, what do we call that? False start? Yeah. yeah, there you go. There you go. Throw the flag. All right. Let's, let's get going. We got to get past it. All right. All right. We got to well, get past it. All right, Ben. Well, we were just talking about Houston <laughs> Academy's loss to Pike County last week tonight. H.A. hosting the one and one op Bobcats. You never know. Op up nine zip late in the second quarter. The Bobcat is enjoying it, as you can see at Northcutt Field. Bobcats deep in Raider territory. Hal Smith Hart. Son of Superintendent Mike Smith Hart rolls out, looks downfield, he takes off first down and then some after the zebra throws the yellow laundry on the flag. Smith Hart again finds six foot five Eric Matthews and he goes in untouched. Bobcats up 15 nothing just before intermission. They go on to win this one rather, rather largely up 22. Houston Academy 7. HA's That's got to get moving if they want to get in the postseason. Second here. loss in, the, in a row. It's becoming That's tough. Uh, Pivotal time for the Red. All right, well, moving to eastern Geneva County, Red Tops hosting the Strawn Tigers at Red Top Stadium. Visitors struck early, scored often. The ball on this side on the opening drive, Strawn's 200 pounder, junior back Trey Strickland the third. Well, he hits Pater, but the TD called back for a Tiger hold. No matter. Several plays later, it's Strickland scoring again, this time from short yardage out, 7 0. Now, later in the first stanza, Red Tops punt. Watch this coming up. This is rather a strange play indeed. In fact, it fooled a lot of us. It was a bull rush on the punter. Tigers fall on it. It is now 14 to nothing. Visitors wow. the lead. But <laughs> the Red Tops come back in the second <clears throat> half. And they win this game, folks. It would be 28 to is 13. That, is that the play of the night? The bull rush on the, the bull ball? rush, and that was, you know, but, yeah. but you know, that's how it goes. I mean, we had all strong highlights, but yeah. then again, Slocum came back in the second half yeah. and won the game. That, that is how it goes sometimes. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Midland City now. One and two Warriors taking on 0 and two Ashford tonight. Both squads really need a victory in this 4A region contest. Warriors fired up to be back home. In the Midland, baby. It was all about Ashford in the first quarter, though. Ashford's Emmanuel Pittman takes the handoff, breaks a big run for the Yellow Jackets first down. They look at him. He's got wheels. Yeah, yeah. Like he's cruising 84 East on a Friday <laughs> night. Check this out, though. Deshante Kirkland going to take the direct snap. He fumbles it, picks it up, though, and takes it in for six. That's how yeah. you get on the extra point, my man. Six nothing. Jackets going to have the ball again here. Kirkland Hands taking up. the handoff. Yeah. Scoots around right in, and he's in. Give that man six more points here. Jacks go up 14 to nothing. He's trying to be the player of the week. Dale County, though, wins at 52-33. And again, sometimes the highlights yeah. that we get don't indicate they, the final that's score. That's right, not reflective at all. But then again, Ashford is... Uh they're coming on somewhat, they're you know, on. under their second-year coach, uh, Mr. Little. Let's uh, head over to the big board. Draco, what you got for us? All right. First up, Brantley taking on Florala. They win this one 55-14. And then Georgiana taking on McKenzie, winning this one big 52-21. Tuscaloosa Academy winning 55-12 over Lakeside School. And then Northside Methodist winning this one 30-13 over Pike Liberal Arts. And that's the last one for right now, but we will have more. So back to Mike and Ben. All right, that's a win streak for Northside. Mike. Yeah, two yeah. big wins mm -hmm. in two big weeks. We're live in the Timberline Home Studios.
on the extra point. We'll be right back. Cheerleader Squad of the Week, sponsored by Physicians Hearing Center. Well, the votes are in, and on behalf of Physicians Hearing Center, we'd like to help you hear that cheer. And WDHN, the Extra Point Show, Cheerleaders of the Week, Rehoboth High School. <laughs> this is the Sports Center show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, Drake, you got to get moving. You're going too slow. Boom, 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 boom. Hit them scores. All right, what we, uh, let's see. Where we're going to home is. Early County Worth, Worth County? Mm -hmm. Bacon. 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 Say it fast. Yeah, there you go. No, bacon and charter. Bacon and charter. Say it fast. Watch yourself. Brooks, Brooks County Bakery. Brooks County Bakery. Commissioner of the Sunbelt Conference, and you're watching the next generation of Sunbelt stars on the Extra Point. Well, that was yes, pretty you cool, are. Yeah. yeah. You are watching the next uh, generation of yeah. Sunbelt stars. Big uh, Troy game. Yeah, the 0-3 yeah. Beauregard Hornets coming to Central Houston County, taking on the 1-1 one one Rehoboth Rebels, and they have really turned things around. They have, Mike, and uh, Rehoboth already with a win against Ashford this season. That's more than they had in all of 2018. Mm -hmm. Governor, Futaji, please. 9-11 was on Wednesday. Rehoboth taking time to remember those who fell during the attack, and I love that. Thank you for doing that. Defense for the first quarter of the game tonight. Both the Rebels and Hornets couldn't seem to find any momentum. They kept trading the ball back and forth mm -hmm. in this one. And Rehoboth finally gets the scoring started. Chris Hovey going to punch it in for the <laughs> touchdown there. Nice job. They weren't <laughs> able to convert the two-point conversion. Rebels lead is 6 to nothing after the first final score. Rehoboth yes, is 2-1 and one on the year. 33-21 to 21 with a win. Well, congratulations Over to Donnie Gillian, guard. the coach of Rehoboth. Great guy. You know, yeah. He didn't win a game last year, folks. All right, well, folks, let's now move to Class 1A football in Western Coffee County. Elba, the Elba Tigers taking on the 0-2 Kinston Bulldogs. Kinston has never defeated intra Coffee County rival Elba. All right, let's go. And here is the uh, the final. <laughs> <laughs> Pass interference. Pass interference, sometimes, indeed. Uh, and that's a nice move. The <laughs> highlight script didn't quite <laughs> make it into the uh, rundown here. All right, let's go to the final score there. And we have Elba once again. They remain the team in charge. As Peyton Harrison, good job, coach. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks, in the independent school category, Abbeville Christian Generals hosted Crenshaw Christian tonight. Roll the footage, please. Ryan Ledford going to get things kicked off here with a pass to Jackson Blaylock, right? Yeah, wow, look at that. Watch your back. Nifty. Play action pass <laughs> there, and uh, that's actually the next yeah. play. He, he was eating sack lunch <laughs> on the first play. There we go. All right, so check him out. Hits him in the flat, coming back around uh -huh. on the outside. <laughs> Crenshaw Christian going to get a big run coming up here as well. Let's talk about Abbeville Christian, though, tonight, because they needed this win big time. Yeah. yeah. And Go ahead and show me the final score on this one, guys. They did not get it, Mike. It was a mm. tough night at home for Abbeville Christian, 41-7. to 7. Yeah, in the independent school category. 
But of course, Northside Methodist, they won earlier, you know, so that's the big night for them, there. too. Uh -huh. All right, folks, let's now head south of the border in Northwest Jackson County. The 2 0 Graceville Tigers hosting, woo, it's a big full moon, in fact. All right, look at that pass. Beautiful. In the coffin quarter, that was Graceville scoring it, and it is 14 2. Nothing, and that would wind up being just a tip of the iceberg. Let's go to the final here, folks. And the final score is the home team, the Graysville Tigers, big time Ooh. blank the Holmes County Blue Devils, 32 to nothing. Shut out. On Shut the out. Victory tonight. And that is the conference game, so that was very important for both teams. Very was. Draco, what you got for us on the big board? All right, real quick. Early County winning this one 41 7 over Worth County, Seminole County 14 7 over Baconton Charter. And then Bainbridge over Brooks County 27-26. And then Vernon over Chipley 46-8. And Mariana over Rutherford 29-20. And we do want to take a second to thank all of the fans who did call in because we had all of the scores for all of tonight's game. So thank you guys. Mike, Ben. All right, play of the week coming up next. We'll be right back. Band of the week, sponsored by Buffalo Rock. On behalf of Buffalo Rock Pepsi and WDHN of Dothan, I'd like to present this award for Band of the Week, the Abbeville Yellow Jackets. Yeah. Total. Oh, okay. How much time will we have? We won't have any. <coughs> um, I guess just wipe to the. Can we? Can we hit the play? Of the, what is the play of the week? Uh, it's that, uh, I'll play the. <coughs> Who sponsors play of the week? Lewis Smith Supply? Lewis Supply. Yeah. yeah, all right. Buy me 10 seconds, I'll get us out of here. All right. You're, you're okay. the, did we get it in the script? Yes. Uh, yeah. Smith Hart to who was the receiver? Smith Hart to um, Eric no. uh, Matthews. Yeah. Oh, the big guy. Yeah. Hart to Eric Matthews. Just wipe into it, yeah. Play of the Week brought to you by Lewis Smith Supply. This is our quarterback, Hal Smith. Our finds Eric Matthews across the middle, and he walks in untouched for six points tonight. Congratulations, young man. You made the extra point. Thanks to everyone involved. This is a great show. We love it. We love you. Good night, friends. <laughs>